All right, let's talk a bit about some uncommon, unspoken habits that you're probably doing that is contributing to hair breakage. You can't undo breakage, but you can prevent it. So our job as women who are on the path to long hair is to try to maintain and retain as much length as possible. And here are a few things and some insights that I want to share with you that you don't hear. The first thing is stop over styling your hair. And what I mean by this is it is very common, at least in the past for me to over style my hair. I'm trying to slick it down when it doesn't want to be slicked down. I am over curling it, I'm over straightening it because I want it to be flat. So I just keep taking it through. Over styling your hair is a sign that you have unrealistic expectations about your hair. I get it. The truth about life and humanity in general is that we all have limitations. So knowing what those limitations are is going to promote healthier practices, healthier expectations, and you will least likely find yourself being disappointed for your hair not doing what it doesn't want to do. For example, my protective style is about two weeks old now, and but when I installed it, I didn't use Shine Jam or any kind of jam or gel to get it nice and neat because my hair is not going to stay that way. And so it is better for me not to apply those types of products if I want my protective style to last longer. Now, maybe you're someone that can do that. The chances are if your hair has to be manipulated to a degree to make it look a certain way, you're over styling it and your hair isn't able to just be itself. And we don't know what kinds of pressures our scalp is feeling just from the slightest pull. You have to consider porosity, environmental factors, diet, genetics. There are so many things that goes into how and why your hair behaves the way that it does. And so accepting that as soon as you can will make your hair growth goals much more attainable and realistic. <sighs> Here's a big one, which I overlook a lot, especially at this phase of my protective style when my scalp is doing the most in terms of itching you have to stop scratching your scalp. Now, yes, this sounds like common sense to most of us. We've heard it already. We could be causing micro tears and trauma to the scalp and so on, but sometimes you don't even realize you're doing it. I know I, I do. I It will literally be a random thing. I'll just go like this and then I'll start doing this. So they tell you to pat your head or, you know, and so on. Our nails have are very, very sharp. I don't know if you've ever accidentally cut yourself. With my nails, it's like it could've just been a careless movement and it gave me a scratch, okay? So imagine that doing to a fine hair strand, especially if you're one who has fine hair, as I do, very fine, very delicate. So if my nails can rip through my skin that has layers of dermis, epidermis, I don't get into the science of that, but it has layers and my nail can literally cut into those layers and draw blood, then how much more will it do that to a simple strand of hair so granted I could be scratching right using my nail for demonstration I'm not doing it hard and I could easily just rip through one of my roots and so if you're someone who struggles with breakage especially in the middle here or in the back or any parts of your hair where it itches a lot it could be because your nail is actually tearing at your hair so you just want to be mindful of that if it gets unbearable and remedies such as anti-itching sprays or oils or grease that, that, that helps supposed to calm down the itching those things don't work it's time to do my next habit number three stop prolonging your wash day stretching your wash days for the sake of growth protective styling is probably one of the most optimal ways to retain length you have protective style challenges one of which i am a part of you have women that will put themselves on a schedule to protective style and they will push it as long as they're able to six weeks three months half a year you might be the unicorn that's like my scalp nothing happens but if you're someone like me where your hair noticeably becomes more irritated itching a lot more flaking a lot more stop prolonging your wash days or stretching your wash days going in between a, a, or going a long time before your wash day just because you're trying to retain growth because most likely you will end up hurting your protective styling efforts for length retention if you are ignoring your scalp. I am a believer now of listening to my body in terms of when I need to upkeep, upkeep it. When we start getting foul odors, our 
signal is to go take a shower or if it's something that you're not used to go to the doctor and see what's going on in your blood so if my scalp is itching unbearably and almost to the point where I'm just like wow I'm itching all the time <laughs> of course if you don't pick at it it may go away but if my scalp is saying it's time to wash me it's time to wash it wash your hair when your scalp is ready when your scalp wants to be washed because the other side of this too is build up sebum dirt all kinds of things product is preventing your scalp from breathing and breathing is important for, for for life right breath of god it's it's our life this is how we got life so it's important for your scalp to be able to breathe but with this being said you also don't want to stretch your wash days so far because the more shed hairs that you gain on a daily basis that you're not taking out the more work and manipulation that you have to do to get all of those the collection of shed hairs out so for me i'm going on two weeks now if i shed on average 100 strands a day that means i've got 700 strands already in the week but times two that's 1400 hair strands shedding that it's just stuck in my hair. So that means I'm gonna probably spend a lot more time removing those shed hairs, and that means more manipulation, more mechanical sweeping of the sections to get as much of it out. Also look at how your decisions are affecting your hair's ability to retain its length. If I have to go through more shed hairs over and over, chances are some of those weaker ends are going to get broken off by the removing, even though I'm finger detangling, even though I'm being gentle. The fact is when something is weak, it could take little to no pressure to break it off. So just be mindful of these habits that we don't always talk about in the natural hair world on YouTube, but these were things that came to me because I noticed them more so when I'm protective styling. During my wash and go, I don't have any problems because I'm washing my hair consistently. My scalp doesn't even get a chance to get to the itchy level that it is right now. So, which I'm so happy tomorrow I will be taking my hair down and washing and reinstalling my protective style because I thought I was gonna go four weeks, but I had to listen to my hair. I had to think about the long term. I had to think about if I decide to extend this to another two weeks, where is that gonna leave the condition of my hair? It'll probably be worse off than if I had just taken the mid way to maintain my hair if you have any tips and maybe some share some uncommon I want to know those uncommon things because a lot of things have been repeated already online but I always love discovering those those tricks and tips that you don't normally hear so if you yourself have some to share please spill the beans in the comments and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video bye